Thank you, Char. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> All right. The bell has rung and church has begun. I see some more people streaming in, so praise God for that. Uh, before we get to our worship service, we're going to have a couple of announcements. And let me begin by thanking you all for being here today. Um, I know a number of people are concerned about the surge in the COVID virus and folks who are sick and that sort of thing. So let me bring you up to speed on that just uh, so everybody can be on the same page. The council made a decision yesterday that we would go back to the masked and unmasked seating for today. So if you are where, if you are sitting behind you know, back rows and it all looks like everybody's compliant, please wear your mask. If you're not able to wear a mask, come forward and you can sit in the forward uh, pews just to separate folks. Um, some have asked about the Mecklenburg County mask mandate for religious institutions, which is set to take effect on September 22nd. That is a week from this coming Wednesday. So next Sunday will be the 19th. That will not be in effect. More than likely, my expectation is we will continue the mask unmasked seating at that time. When it comes around to the next Sunday, the 26th of September, that Mecklenburg County mandate will be in effect, I presume. And if it is, then we will comply with that mandate and it will be mass mandatory in the sanctuary. Uh, we will continue to do uh, you know, Facebook Live for those of you who want to be uh, watching from home, and that might be the prudent decision for all of you. A couple of things I want to say on, the, the, on this. <clears throat> I can't stress the seriousness of COVID uh, enough. We have a number of people who have been sick or are sick currently. When you look at the statistics, and I was looking at the Mecklenburg County website this morning, um, of those who have tested positive, less than 1% were fully vaccinated. That means over 99% were not fully vaccinated. So the vaccine is going to be a key thing. Um, the good news is all the indicators have started to turn over the past week, turn downward. So let's pray that that continues. Uh, but even if it does, given the trajectory up and down, we probably won't be out of this till mid-October at best uh, case scenario. Looking at other statistics from the county, 90% of the people in the hospital are unvaccinated. 83% uh, of those who have passed we're over the age of 60. If you're over the age of 60, you're going to want to take additional precautions. 97% um, <clears throat> of those who have died in Mecklenburg County had an underlying health condition, a chronic health condition. If you have a chronic health condition, please take additional steps to protect yourself and your family. And again, I would encourage everyone, if you are able, get the vaccine. If you have not been vaccinated, I encourage you to do so. Um, and hopefully we will get through this well enough with God's good grace and everything will be fine. <clears throat> All right. With that said, we're going to go on. There's a church council meeting this Tuesday night. I'm sure we'll be discussing COVID protocols there. So if you are a church member and are interested, you're always welcome to come to the council meeting. Council members are required or encouraged strongly to attend. We will be in the fellowship hall for social distancing uh, and that should be well enough. Uh, women's Fellowship Breakfast still scheduled for September 25th. If that changes, uh, whoever knows, please let me know. But currently that is on. Church historian needed. I brought this up last week when we moved the office over from the Parsonage into the Education Building. We uncovered a great deal of historical documents that we uh, do not want to lose. And so I would like to have someone who really enjoys that sort of thing to go through those documents and find out what we need to keep and what we do not need to keep. But that would be uh, an interesting thing for somebody who likes history. First Baptist Church missionary training today. So we have been talking about members and ministers and missionaries. And some of you all signed up to be a missionary. And I'm very proud of you and happy about that. We will start that missionary training today, immediately following the service, again in the fellowship hall, so that we can social distance. For some of the folks who aren't able to make it, we're also going to Zoom it for those folks. And if anybody here who has not signed up, but is just curious as to what this missionary effort is uh, in the community, you're welcome to come and, and listen in. So maybe you'll decide to become a missionary as well. Uh, last note here in the bulletin, buy a book for Bailey's classroom. Bailey Dickerson, as you know, uh, grew up in this church and now she's a teacher uh, at Huntersville, Blythe Elementary, I believe it is, and uh, she needs some books for her classroom. And there's instructions there. If you'd like to go to Amazon and order books for her, that would be wonderful. And uh, if you need help with that, you can see me or see one of the other folks. 
Other than that, our regular announcements, we will have the men's prayer breakfast Wednesday morning at 7 in the fellowship hall. We will have Bible study on Wednesday that is Zoomed as well as in person. We'll do that in the fellowship hall. Uh, we have Bible study at 6.30 in the fellowship hall and Zoomed as well. Choir practice Wednesday night? Possibly? Possibly. Possibly. All right, stay tuned. Stay, stay tuned with Terry if you're in a choir. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Any other announcements that need to be made before we begin our worship? I see none. Terry, can you lead us in worship, please? It'll once again be my honor. In the 103rd Psalm, the Bible says, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will He harbor His anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our inequities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is His love for those who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far He has removed our transgressions from us. Let's stand as we sing our opening hymn. It's hymn number 158. Think about His love, or the words will be on the screen. said amen you may be seated okay thank you terry time for prayers and praises we have a number here so let's go through it the first uh whole batch has to do with covid and again i said this was uh serious the keller family uh the luke and ava i believe it is the two children have covid uh, Tommy Harmon uh, is fairly well recovered, but recovering. Uh, CJ and Ali Vasquez, COVID. Jan Enloe has COVID. Uh, Ronnie Brown, he's not listed. He has COVID. He's actually in the hospital at Lake Norman Regional, so please lift him up in prayer. Um, <clears throat> Want to pray for a fellow fireman of Ray Pinion. Ben Brown has COVID. And then we also have uh, a gentleman who passed. He was also a firefighter in Huntersville. His name is Jeff Hager. Young man passed away from COVID. His wife is still in the hospital. And I believe they have a couple of kids, don't they? Four kids. Four kids. So let's lift that whole family up there. That's Jeff Hager uh, and family. <clears throat> in addition to that, um, let's see who else we got here. Um, we're going to lift up Michael and uh, Levi Eastridge, critical after the shooting. Um, and then you just lost a... Mr. Lawrence, uh, so pray for that family. The hurricane victims, Catherine Judge, my mother, uh, dementia, I was up there in New York last week. She's not well, so please lift her up. Uh, Patricia Till is Priscilla Morris's mother. She's having difficulties with her cancer treatment. And then Maddox has bone cancer. I'm not recalling who that is, but we'll, the Lord knows who that is. Reginald Oswalt has Parkinson's also on our prayer list today. Um, Bobby Lavin, the McKinney's neighbor, has Alzheimer's. 
and so lift that family up as well. Uh, <clears throat> other prayer requests before I continue on? All right, seeing none, I'll continue on our regular prayer request. We have, uh, obviously, First Baptist Church Cornelius, Revive Iglesia Cristiana, which meets before us. The Kachin Baptist Church meets after us. The church is worldwide, and especially persecuted Christians around the world. And I'll particularly lift up those in Burma, which is where the Kachin Baptist Church uh, home country is. Uh, our government and our leaders, our country, especially the military and all those uh, victims from 9-11, uh, not only the people who, who died, um, but all those who died subsequently in the wars, uh, first responders, um, and let's see, those are all the things that we need to lift up in prayer. There's a bunch of praises, and I really want to hit on that. <clears throat> we have now 15 children uh, attending the children's church, so praise God for that. That has grown very well, and Roy, Pastor Baum's uh, wife, is now assisting in the children's church, so praise God for that. Uh, we have that uh, Cornelius Elementary School prayer box uh, over there, and so we're getting prayer requests from the school teachers. Corn Pie, which is the Cornelius Partners in Education, we had that first meeting. We got back eight responses, everything from assistance with school supplies. I have uh, somebody who's looking for help paying their child's college tuition. Someone had medical bills that were over $7,000. There's a lot of needs out there. Uh, and so we're hoping to help as a community with all of these things uh, to help these families. So keep Corn Pie, Cornelius Partners in Education, in your prayers. And um, we got some birthdays. May Davis's birthday today? Hey, happy birthday. Uh, Angela Stevens' birthday today. Judy Callahan's birthday today. And my son Christopher is on Friday. Any other uh, announcements or prayers or praises? Yes, Terry. Mine was yesterday. Yeah, so was Wayne Ballard's. <laughs> My daughter, even with all her underlying issues, is now fully vaccinated. Oh, praise God for that. Amen. Shelly DeWeese vaccinated. Very good, very good. All right. Any other praises or prayer requests? Everything good in your family? How's your sister? Still struggling. Still struggling? Okay. What's her name? Barb. Barb. Her last name, just call her Barb L. Because her last name is just a challenge. Barb L. <laughs> Chemo treatments, okay. All right. Unspoken prayer requests? I'm sure there's many. Let's take it all to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with praise and thanksgiving on our lips, first and foremost, Lord, because you are a holy God and you are our Father in heaven. And you are here for us each and every time. Uh, even before we come to you, you know that we have these needs and concerns, and so uh, you're already working in the world to do what's right. But uh, Lord, we bring it to you anyway, because we know you hear our prayers, and we know that you care for us, and that you will do what's right uh, ultimately for us. And so Lord God and Father, we thank you for being our Father, and for always hearing our prayers. And Lord, we lifted up many today, many families, particularly with this COVID virus, Lord, I praise that uh, we are seeing the numbers begin to turn uh, in Mecklenburg County, but there's a long way to go. So, Lord, I uh, just ask that you pour protection over this congregation and over this entire county and this state and really the world, Lord, uh, and that you would give us wisdom as a council as how to best uh, manage the congregation through these things. Give people uh, the uh, wisdom themselves to do what's right for themselves. If that even means not coming to church, uh, that may be the best thing for them. So, Lord God and Father, just give us wisdom uh, above all those things. But Lord, for these people who are in need, you know the need and you have the power. And so we turn it into your hands. In Jesus I pray. Amen. <clears throat> and because of COVID, we no longer pass the plate, but it, uh, the collection plate is in the back table. If you'd like to continue to support the ministries of this church, uh, you're welcome to leave your tithes and offerings in the plate on your way out. For those of you who are watching on Facebook Live, you can uh, send in your tithes and offerings to First Baptist Church of Cornelius, P.O. Box 100, Cornelius, North Carolina, 28031. Or you can go to the website, firstbaptistchurchofcornelius.org, click the Donate button, and donate electronically. And either way, thank you all for your generosity and your support of the mission of this church.
Terry, can you lead us, please? The Bible says, I, meaning Jesus, am the rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. Let's stand while we sing hymn number 626, or the words will be in the screen. It's called the lily of the valley. once again and thank you for all the blessings that he's bestowed upon us all the challenges of life but even more thank him for the tithes and offerings that were brought into his churches around the world today that those gifts will be used to edify his kingdom here on earth oh my most kind and gracious heavenly father what a blessing it is be able to pause and take a deep breath and relax in your loving arms Lord knowing that you are the fairest of 10,000 to my soul 10,000 is even too low a number Lord but you know what we mean we love you dearly for you are the omnipotent the always present the always, the all-knowing Lord and Savior, our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, the lover of our souls, our constant companion, and our friend. What a friend we have in you. We do ask, Lord, that you undergird all the blessings and the treasures that were brought into your churches around the world today. All the tithes, all the love offerings. We ask that you undergird them, Lord. That you guide us to use them the way that you'd have them used, Lord. We ask that you multiply them like you did the loaves and fishes by the sea. Multiply them, Lord, for your glory and your glory alone. Bless our church. Bless all the people of the world, Lord, for it's in keeping with your will. Bless the hungry and thirsty around the world. If it be in keeping with your will, help them find the sustenance they need to survive today. Help us to help them undergird our efforts, Lord. Work miracles where your will dictates and make sure 
that the aid gets through to where it's needed with as little shrinkage as possible. Please bless all the victims of disasters around the world, dear God, and help them to recover. Bless the firefighters. Keep them close to you. Draw them closer to you as their needs may be. Help them do their very best and bring them home safely to their family and friends when their duty's done. If it's in keeping with your will. If it's in keeping with your will, Lord, send beneficial moisture in more moderate conditions to the areas where they're fighting wildfires around the world. Help them be successful putting out those flames around the world, Lord. If it's in keeping with your will. Bless all the Christians around the world. Protect them. Undergird them. Lead God and direct them, Lord, and use them to help save souls here on earth through the power of your Holy Spirit whenever they're given the opportunity. Bless your services all around the world, Lord. Undergird the speakers of the hours. Help them to be fruitful. Help them to produce fruit for your kingdom here on earth. Forgive us for our many sins and shortcomings. Help us to truly to truly walk more Christ-like each day. Help us to leave a little bit of ourself, lay it aside, Lord, every day, and walk more like Jesus. Heavenly Father, we love you. We lift these prayers to you, our Heavenly Father, in the name of your beautiful, powerful, Holy Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Since we're a little challenged in the choir today, we thought I thought we would invite all of you to be members of the choir today. Turn to hymn pay, number 480 in the hymn book, the Burgundy hymn book in front of you there. There's a hymn there called Only Trust Him. It's page 480. The words won't be on the screen, but let's, let's sing that together. Can we stand, please? Hymn number 480, Only Trust Him. Amen. You may be seated. Now as Shar continues to play, let's prepare our hearts and minds, our very souls, to receive God's message for us today.
Thank you, Char. Our scripture reading today is from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 13, and we'll read verses 6 through 9. If you are able, please stand for the reading of God's Word. And once again, this is Luke chapter 13, beginning at verse 6. And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree that was planted in his vineyard. He came looking for fruit on it and found none. He told the vineyard worker, listen, for three years I've come looking for fruit on this fig tree and I haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it even waste the soil? But he replied to him, sir, leave it this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. Perhaps it will produce fruit next year. But if not, you can cut it down. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Join me in prayer if you would. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for allowing us to come together in your house to read your word and to uh, consider just how much you love us, Lord. This parable today about second chances, Lord, uh, pertains to us individually and collectively. So Lord God and Father, pour your spirit upon the people that we would see your grace in each and every word. In Jesus, I pray. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. All right. So, as I said, uh, the sermon title is The God of Second Chances. And as I started to uh, do write the sermon this week, uh, the first thing that popped into my mind was a song from the kids' program, Veggie Tales. All right. Now, you all know I've got six kids, so Veggie Tales has been a big thing in our house over the years. And I thought I'd give you all just a little taste of, of what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> God gives us a chance. All right, all right. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. All right. So I didn't see anybody dancing, but I kind of enjoyed that. Um, <clears throat> no, it's just the, the VeggieTale story that you just saw. I probably should have set it up, but it was from the VeggieTale Jonah uh, story. And in that scene, or prior to that scene, as you all know, Jonah was called by God to go to Nineveh and preach to the people of Nineveh for their repentance and salvation. He didn't want to do that, so he got on the boat, and of course then the storm comes, the sailors cast lots, they decide it's Jonah who's the problem, they throw him overboard, the giant fish swallows Jonah, and then he's in the belly of the whale, and in his desperation, that scene takes place inside the belly of the whale. Uh, the angels come to him and, and tell him that he's going to get a second chance. And that's where that all came from. Uh, <clears throat> but it's, 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 it's fun and it's, in, it's instructive, I think, because God is a God of second chances. God gives us a second chance. Each and every one of us who is saved has been given a second chance to have eternal life in his name. And so not only does God's second chances 
apply to us individually in salvation, but it applies to us collectively uh, as a church. And what we're going to see in the reading today is that we as a church need to use our time and resources wisely to produce fruit for the kingdom of God. Because that's why God put us here. That's why he planted us here in Cornelius. And I hope this will become uh, obvious as we go through this. And we're going to talk about a couple of different things. The first we're going to talk about is the tree without fruit. And this begins in verse 6 of today's reading. It says, And he told this parable, he meaning Jesus, of course, A man had a fig tree that was planted in his vineyard. He came looking for fruit, but there was none on it. Now, of course, this is a parable. So a parable is a story that has a moral lesson to it, a moral truth. The story itself is not necessarily true, but the truth within it is absolute truth. And in this story, the man represents God. And in this story, the fig tree in the garden represents the people of Israel, the chosen people of God. And the garden is the kingdom of God or Israel where they are. And the tree was planted by God. The tree was put there. The Israelites were put there in order to produce fruit for God. And that fruit would be bringing glory to God, showing the world that there is a God. Just like Jonah was sent to the Ninevites, non-believing people, to tell them about God and salvation through him. Although he refused, he was not bearing fruit. And the man, God, comes to the tree with an expectation that there will be fruit. Right? He went looking for fruit. This is his expectation. I planted this tree. It's growing. It should be producing fruit. But then there's a problem. He finds no fruit. And so his expectations are not missed or met. Excuse me. <clears throat> now, when we're looking at Bible study, all right, when you're doing basic Bible study, the first goal always is to ask, what is the author's original application? Right, too often we try to jump ahead to apply it to ourselves. If we want to hit the target properly, we want to look at the original application. And in this original application, when Jesus is speaking to his original audience, he is talking about the people of Israel. All right, he's talking about how they were planted by God and how they are not producing fruit. And that is what my seminary professor used to say is the center of the target. All right, so we know what it is. Now we can take that out to the outer rings of the target and have greater application. So if we want to look to those outer rings, we can then say, all right, back then God had planted the people of Israel, his chosen people, in order to bring glory to him through their service to him and sharing the good news of him. What about today? Well, the chosen people of God today are the church. He has planted us in various places and he expects us to produce fruit as well. The application holds as we go wider and wider. It also applies to the individual if you want. God has saved you. He has planted you in order to produce fruit. And so consequently, are you producing fruit as well? Are you bringing glory to God? But today we're going to focus on the church itself. And so the first question to ask you all as we begin this sermon today is, do you believe that God planted First Baptist Church of Cornelius, right here on Catawba Avenue in Cornelius, for the purpose of bearing fruit. All right, do you buy into that? I would hope you do. And if you do, then ask the question, what sort of fruit might God expect to find when he comes looking for fruit at First Baptist Church of Cornelius? All right, and then you would ask, is it even bearing fruit? And could it bear more? So these are questions that we need to begin to ask. Did God plant us here to bear fruit? I will say yes. Is he finding fruit on our tree? We can discuss that in various ways. But let's suppose not. And then we come to the next verse. I'll call it the judgment on the tree. Verse 7 says, He, meaning the master or the man, told the vineyard worker, we have a new character, Listen, for three years I've come looking for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it even waste the soil? Now the man tells the vineyard worker, and the vineyard worker here is Jesus. And he says to Jesus, just cut it down. 
All right, the word here in Greek, ekopto, means to chop it out, not just cut it down. All right, so when you're thinking about a tree and you're going to cut it down, you normally think you cut the trunk and it falls over. But what does that leave? That leaves the stump. What happens if you leave the stump? Well, it might eventually start to grow back, right? This word means to cut it out from the ground, all right? Remember when John the Baptist said, the axe is already at the root of the tree? If you want to kill that tree completely, you take it out by the roots. And so that's really what the word is saying. Cut it out completely. Now this word, ekopto, is a compound word, which means to chop out. Uh, but the word kopto itself can be translated also as to lament or to mourn. And so there's a certain sadness connotated with this word. So there's no pleasure in the man saying, cut the tree down, chop it out of the ground, but it seems to be something that's necessary. And why is it necessary? Well, first of all, he's been coming for three years, and there's still no fruit on this tree. It's not like the tree's just having a bad year. The tree has not produced consistently year over year. And even worse than that, it's not that it's just not bearing fruit, but it's using up the soil. And this is a very important aspect to comprehend. He says, why should it even waste the soil or use up the soil? All right, think of it. The tree is there, grow it's growing presumably, it's not bearing fruit, but it's there, right? It's taking in nutrients from the soil, it's taking in water from the soil, it's using up the soil, which would mean those nutrients and water is not available for any other plants. The tree is essentially feeding itself, but it's not doing anything to bear fruit. And that's a big problem. Now years ago when I was a child, my father was concerned. We had a big maple tree on the side of our house. And he could not get grass to grow around that maple tree no matter what because of the shade. And of course it was drinking up all the nutrients and the water. And so my father decided that he was going to write to the local college, right? The agricultural college, he felt somebody must have a solution for this. And so he writes a letter, explains the problem. They write back to him and they say, Mr. Judge, your tree fits the qualification of a weed. All right? It's something that you don't want. It's using up the soil and the water. The solution of any weed is to pull it out. If you want grass, you're going to have to take down that tree. And so that was what they told him. And so that's the reason we pull weeds up from our garden. Right? If you plant a garden and you have a vegetable garden and weeds start to grow up around it, you pull them out, right? Because the weeds take up the water, take up the nutrients, they stop the other plants from producing fruit. And that is the bigger problem. It's not just a problem that they don't produce fruit, but it gets in the way of others producing fruit. And this can be applied to the church as well. All right. What are we using our resources for? Are we the tree that's not bearing fruit and using our resources simply to feed ourselves and have an inward perspective? Or are we bearing fruit that serves others? This is the analogy here of this tree. To decide, we need to look. What are we about doing? What are the activities that we're doing? Are they mostly internally focused or are they externally focused? Last week we talked about the property use. We talked about how it was great that we had three congregations meeting in this sanctuary on Sunday. Good use of the property. But six days a week the sanctuary is empty. We talked about the fellowship hall and the education building and how those are really, tech, really only used once or twice a week. What else could we be using those for? All right, the parsonage, praise God, we have the new pastor and his family living there. That's great use of that facility. So we've got fruit bearing in some places, not so much fruit in others that we should address. And the other thing is to look at the budget. We're in the budget process right now. What are we going to spend our money on in 2022? Are we going to focus our funds for ourselves? Or are we going to focus our funds for the external world and expanding the kingdom of God? So the question you might ask is, is First Baptist Church a fruit tree or a weed? And to what degree is it? Are we producing fruit or are we using up the soil? And that's a question we have to grapple with. 
And then that brings us to the last part of this verse, uh, this, this chapter, I should say. The, the second chance for the tree. We have a fruitless fig tree. We have judgment on that tree. Cut it down. But now there's going to be a second chance in verse 8. But he, meaning the vine dresser, replied to him, the man who owns the garden, Sir, leave it here this year also. I will dig around it and fertilize it. All right, we'll stop there just for a second. I'll dig around it and I'll fertilize it. The vine dresser is not ready to cut down the tree. He thinks there's still opportunity for this thing to bear fruit. And he sees some of the problems why it's not bearing fruit. And he says, I'm going to address those, but be patient with the tree because I need to make it healthy again so that it can bear fruit. And the first thing he says, I'm going to dig around it. I'm going to dig around the tree. All right, why do you, why do you cultivate? Why do you till the ground before you plant a garden? All right, you do that, one, to soften the ground. All right, remember the parable of the seeds. When it landed on the hard ground, it wouldn't grow. The birch just came and ate it up. You have to cultivate that ground. You have to till that ground. It breaks it up. It makes it softer so the roots can spread a little more easily. It allows oxygen into the ground. It allows the water to seep through more, more readily. It's good to break up the ground. It also lets the nutrients, the fertilizer, get down into it. The hard soil doesn't allow that to happen. All right. Then he says, I'm going to fertilize it. Now the word in Greek literally says cast manure. I'm going to cast manure on it. And that's what they used for fertilizer back then. And uh, we use cow manure today. <laughs> but anyway, the fertilizer is needed to nu for nutrition for the tree. All right. Same way we fertilize our lawns. Same reason why we um, fertilize our vegetable gardens and so on. We want to give it the nutrients it needs and then he says, give it another year. This takes time. This doesn't happen overnight. And it's not just a single season. So he says, give it time. Give it time. Now the vine dresser here is Jesus. And he is imploring to the Father, don't cut them down yet. Let me work on them. And he asks for patience from rather than cutting down the tree, be a God of second chances. Give this tree a second chance and as i said in the beginning this idea of second chances can apply to the individual and salvation or it can apply to the community of the church as well the person or the church is not bearing fruit god has the right because he's the owner to chop it down if he chooses but the son says give it time to repent and bear the fruits of repentance and he says, let me work on it until it can be made healthy again and give it a second chance. And so I would ask you, is First Baptist Church Cornelius in need of a second chance? I think in some respects it is. What would softening the soil here in the church look like? How could we make it less hard so that all of the goodness can get in? And how might we fertilize it? to get it more healthy, the sorts of things that we need to do. These are things that we will need to think about and discuss. And so then we come to the final part of this, this, this passage, and it really leads with a question. What will happen to the tree? And verse 9 says, Perhaps it will produce fruit next year, but if not, you can cut it down. We don't know what happens to the tree in the story. We have this tree that doesn't bear fruit. The man says, cut it down. The vine uh, master says, no, let's just fertilize it and water it and dig around it. And let's see what happens. But it doesn't say, and a year from now, the tree produced fruit. That would be a nice end of the story. But it's intentional. It's intentional because it's designed to make us think about it. All right, what's going to happen? All right, it either is going to bear fruit or is going to get cut down. But we don't know, and it is left up to us to finish the story. And that's the real power of the parable. This parable is similar to the parable that we read last week. The parable of the talents. And if you remember, or if you didn't hear from last week, 
the man was going on a journey. That was Jesus going back to heaven. He left all of the resources of the kingdom with the church. Some he gave five talents, some he gave two, one he gave one. The first two guys took that money, those talents, and invested them, or put them to work, as it said, and doubled it. But the one guy buried it in the ground. You remember that story. And so when the master comes back, he says, good and faithful servant to the ones that had put the talents to work. And he calls him an evil, lazy servant, the one who buried it in the ground. And he takes away from him that one thing he has. And that's a part of the problem. Because the church can lose what it's been given by God if it doesn't put to work all of its resources. And if the tree doesn't bear fruit, then God has every right to cut it down. And so that is where we leave the question. And that question is for you to answer. Are we going to bear fruit or are we going to be cut down? Now, this is the last sermon in this series I am calling Coming Out of COVID. It's been going on for about eight weeks now. And the message of coming out of COVID was simply this. What kind of church do we want to be as we emerge from the COVID pandemic? And some of you might say emerge from the COVID pandemic. We're still right in the heart of it. That's true. But that doesn't mean we can't be preparing for coming out. Just like we're having the missionary training today. What are we going to want to look like? Are we going to, and I used the analogy of the caterpillar a couple of weeks ago, I guess it was. All right, we're a caterpillar, all warm and snug and happy in our cocoon. We can just stay in there and never come out, or we can emerge and become that beautiful butterfly, but the decision is up to us. I started this series, the first sermon was called The Necessity of Change. Talked about Sutton Park Baptist Church in Monroe, how six years ago it closed after 117 years. They had said that our problem was we were unable to reach out to the community around us. And a few months after that church closed, in that same building, a Hispanic congregation of 100 people moved in. All right, There was no reason why that congregation ended other than it was unable or I would even say unwilling to reach out to the community. There was a necessity of change for the way they did things. I then talked about the great cloud of witnesses. All All of those great people who went before us who left a legacy of this church and you can see the names of some of the people in the stained glass windows. Just this year we lost Jerry Wally, we lost Henry Pender, We lost Jesse Kroll, all great people of this church who have passed on. They have handed the baton off to us. Are we going to take the baton and run with it and leave a legacy for the next generation? Or are we going to see the lights go out on our watch? I then talked about spiritual gifts, how each and every one of us has been given a gift by God for the building up of the church and its kingdom. And we talked about discovering your gift and employing it. And you employ it in one of three ways. We talked about members, ministers, and missionaries. Members are people who are being trained for service. Or someone who has been serving for a long time and frankly just needs a little rest. All right? Both of those are perfectly fine, but you're preparing yourself for future service as a member. A minister is someone who is preparing those people for future service. People who are leading Bible studies, people who are leading prayer groups, people who are leading in worship or discipleship. All the different ways that we can sharpen each other, the ministers do that. And when I say minister, I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about you who do that work helping each other to grow in faith and be prepared for service. And then the third role in the church is the missionary. Those are the people who go out, and we need lots of missionaries going out into the community to connect and proclaim the Word of God. And it's all for growing the kingdom. All right, something we have to get our heads around. It's not for growing the church. We want to make disciples, and if they come here, that's great. But we want to see salvation. We want to spread the word of God. It's about growing the kingdom, not growing the church. We talked about the stewardship of our property, and today we talk about the decision that needs to be made. And again, I'm going to leave it to you. You will need to make the decision. Do you want to step up 
and be a part of the kingdom and its expansion. But for, de- for today, the, the call to action, and it's in your bulletin, there are four things I would ask you to do. First, evaluate the fruit that First Baptist Church is producing. All right, take a look. Are we producing fruit? If we are, good. How do we continue to support and feed that? If we're not, how do we make changes? How might we make First Baptist Church more empathetic? And I say empathetic because that gets back to that softening of the soil. All right, the Scriptures talk all the time about hardened hearts. We need to have soft hearts for the community and for the people around us. Those who have not yet been saved. That's a huge issue. If you truly believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, and that there's only two eternal destinations, heaven and hell, then you'd better be prompted to share the good news. How might we make First Baptist Church healthier? What kind of water, what kind of fertilizer do we need? That's something that we need to explore, but we can always become healthier. And then the last one is really the big one. I want you to imagine what kind of fruit we can produce. Because we can produce vast amounts of fruit. All kinds of wonderful, delicious, and kingdom building and God pleasing fruit. So I want you to dream a little bit about what God can do in this church. And then let's go produce that fruit. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen. amen, amen. When I was in seminary, uh, one of the classes I took was a leadership class, and it was near the end of your seminary training, and you had to write a paper about you know, what, how you would do things in the church and whatnot, and so I did my paper. Now, I'm coming out of 30 years of business, having written business plans and forecasting and all that kind of stuff, so mine read very much like a business plan with forecasts and whatnot. And after I made my presentation to the class, the uh, seminary professor said, great presentation, you're missing one thing. And I said, what is that? He said, God's not in your plan. And it was really a good smack right between the eyes, but that's why you go to seminary. And uh, that's the one thing we have to recognize. This is God's church. God has a plan for this church. It's not my plan, it's His plan. Uh, But He has given us His word. His holy word that tells us He expects us to produce fruit and be good stewards. And so we're going to go with that. But we're also going to pray. We're going to pray that the Lord would fill our hearts with wisdom as we did earlier. We can't move forward without Him. And we can't move with Him if He's not with us. And we don't have Him if we don't come to Him in repentance and faith. And that's why we do the invitation every week. So that those of you, if there's anyone out here today who has never given their life to Christ... Today is the day. Now is the time. As the scripture says, don't harden your heart. If you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. And so, Shar's going to play. Terry's going to lead us in the invitational hymn. I'm going to come down here. If you would like to give your life to Christ today, please come forward. If there's something on your mind you want to share with me, a special prayer request, you're always welcome to come forward and bring that. And if there's anybody here today who'd like to join the church, you're welcome to come forward and make that intention known as well. But first and foremost, if you would like to give your life to Christ today, do it today. Terry? In the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter, the Bible says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Let's stand as we sing hymn number 7, excuse me, hymn number 479. It's called Softly and Tenderly. Jesus is calling. Let's sing together.
just a reminder, uh, immediately following the service, we'll be having that first missionary training in the fellowship hall for all those who signed up for missionary training. Even if you didn't and you're just curious, what is this missionary thing about? You're welcome to come sit in with us. It'll probably go uh, for a little less than an hour, probably. But anyway, you're all welcome to come hear what we're going to try to do. All right, with that, Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for being allowed to come into your house today and to hear your holy word and to praise you and bring up songs of worship and prayers and praise. Lord God, Father, you're just, you're really too good to us. But thank you for the second chance you have given us to be called the children of God. Lord God, Father, send these people out with the question on their mind. What would they have First Baptist Church of Cornelius to be and what kind of fruit can we produce if we just take the resources that you give us and put them to work for the advancement of your kingdom. So bless them with wisdom, and courage, and strength. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.